You are listening to I Am Refocused Radio with your host, Shamaya Reed. This show is designed to inspire you to live your purpose and regain your focus. And now, here's your host, Shamaya Reed. Hey, welcome to I Am Refocused Radio. Once again, we are here. We have another show lineup for y'all today. Today, we have a special guest. We're going to talk to to, to Kia LaShawn. She is going to share with us her story. Today's topic, we're going to talk about seeking God for strength in tough times. She has a website that you need to go visit. It's TakiyaLashawnMinistries.com. She also has a podcast herself, Behind This Smile. But first, we're going to learn more about her today. So first and foremost, Takia, how are you doing? I'm doing good. I'm doing wonderful. Thank you so much for that warm welcome and introduction. I am honored to be here and I'm, I'm doing great by the grace of God. Well, I appreciate your time. You have a story. There's a story that dates in your life back on Thanksgiving Day 2023. And you had a nervous breakdown. So before we get to that part of the story, share with the audience first a little bit about your background. Okay, yeah. So my background, um, been blessed to be on this earth for 47 years now. I am a mother of two young adults, a son that's 21, a daughter that is 26. Um, have my first granddaughter on the way with my oldest. I have gone through a tremendous amount of things in my life, as many of us have. Um, but I have learned in life to turn the pain of those things into purpose. And that's what brings me here today. Uh, I'm an author an entrepreneur. I'm a mentor, a TV radio talk show host, and a podcast host. And above all things, I am a child of God. Take us back to Thanksgiving Day, 2023. Yeah. So as I expressed, gone through a lot of things in my life. Um, Thanksgiving 2023, which was just a few months ago, less than a year ago, I also at one point in time to add to the list of titles was a wife. Um, I am now divorced and I have found myself to be the survivor of uh, intimate spouse stalking, which means someone that I was in a relationship with became a stalker. That person was my now ex-husband. Uh, we have been separated since tw- the end of 2021. And after we separated because of a chain, a series of infidelity, Um, misleading lies, just dishonesty on his part. I felt led of God to go ahead and leave that marriage because it was impacting my health physically. I was actually dying from the amount of stress and trauma I was enduring. And so after leaving him and filing for the divorce, he basically refused to give me my space and continue to insert himself into my personal space uh, by tracking devices on my vehicles, popping up to different locations, uh, three different states. This went on for a matter of a year. I ended up finding myself in a state where I began to get some peace and a sense of security because he was at some point arrested. He was arrested and imprisoned for six and a half months while waiting trial. And on November 23rd, November 2023, The week of Thanksgiving, um, I had been assigned to a victim's advocate who kept me updated on the case. And I got a call. I'm sorry, I got an email that said that his bond had been granted. And this was after denying the bond three times. This was after actually hearing that it wouldn't that there was no way they were going to let him out because of the amount of things, the evidence up against him was concerning. And so to get that email that this place that I had struggled and fought so hard to find some peace and safety, to get that email that day saying, well, he's going to be released, it spiraled me. It spiraled me, it triggered me, and it led me into the nervous breakdown that I had. And in January uh, this year, 2024, you launched your own podcast, uh, Behind the Smile. And with that platform, with what you went through not too long ago, what was your goal in launching your own show? Right. So the goal ultimately was to take my voice back, to take my power back, 
and to also empower other, and I say women, but we know statistically that men uh, also can be and are victims of stalking and domestic abuse. But myself as a woman sharing my story, my testimony, my goal was to reach every woman that I possibly could with the sound of my voice. Uh, January, uh, unbeknownst to me prior to becoming a victim of stalking, is Stalking Prevention Awareness Month. And so with a mandate from God that was laid on my heart that I needed to begin to speak up, that the significance of the sound of my voice should not be silenced. And what stalking does is it puts fear and it had put me in a place of fear and hiding. And God was letting me know that this is not who I've created you to be. You don't have anything to fear. And uh, the sound of your voice is very significant. And so it was very important that I launched that podcast in January, on January 18th, which uh, is the day that awareness is encouraged to be promoted. And so I launched that podcast behind this smile that takes a deeper look at not only this journey of myself overcoming stalking, uh, but all the trials that I've endured and really goes behind when you, they say a picture holds a thousand words. And I'm someone that's generally very happy and um, exuberant. And I like to share that, but there's a lot that goes on behind the smile that a lot of people don't see. And I believe in authenticity and transparency. And that was what that podcast, that podcast was launched to do. We're talking to, I guess, Takia, LaShawn, when you look at where you are now versus where you were not too long ago in a space that wasn't, that was unsafe for you, what's some of the things that you're starting to share with your community because now we you have your website, Takia, uh, Sean Ministries.com. Was that something that you plan to use to not just empower women, but also to grow kind of like your own movement, if you will? Yeah. So, um, Tequila Sean Ministries, that, that was actually something that was born prior to this, but because of this experience, I recognized that the enemy was using my ex-husband to try to attempt to take that, to dismantle that from me because it put me in a place of hiding and shutting down and walking away from it. I was digressing. And yes, to answer your question, do I feel like I'm in a different place or where's that place now? I feel empowered. Like I said, I, it's, I've taken my voice back and sitting on platforms like yours and other opportunities to share my, not, not only share my story, but share the message of the gospel. Um, that's my passion. That's my purpose. And so what it's done, it's propelled those things even further than what they were before. Um, I was, things were before I was attempted to be shut down and stop talking. So um, yeah, it's, it's creating a movement. It's creating, it's almost like uh, a, a wave. It starts as a little swirl. And as it gets closer to the shoreline, it gets bigger and bigger and bigger and it comes crashing. And I just see God doing that. And that wave just overtakes and succumbs everything around it. And that's what I intend to allow God to use me to do, just to impact and just take over anything that, any door in any area that he offers me the opportunity to expand to for the betterment of when women and men all over and by sharing my story and that impact. We're talking to Takia LaShawn. And today, stop it like I said earlier, uh, seeking God for strength in tough times. Get into that topic and what you had to go through uh, last year. How did your faith keep you uh, from giving up? Because being in that situation, there could be, you know, a lot of reasons for you to just quit, not just your ministry. I've read in your bio that you you thought about uh, ending your life as well. What? How did your faith sustain you to allow you to keep pressing forward despite the challenge that you was facing? Mm, that's good. You know, I just had a conversation. Well, I, I call it a conversation with God. I'm I'm someone that I pray, and by pray, there are moments where I get down in my quiet space to get on my knees. But I just talk to God daily, like you and I are talking throughout the day. That's prayer. And my conversation with God this morning, I told him, I said, you know, God, I'm grateful and I'm thankful that you stand in my way. And what I mean by that is I serve a God that I've learned that no matter 
how it looks or how it feels that he's going to always ensure that I get to where he wants me to get. So even when I was in that space of wanting to end my life or um, having what we call today suicidal ideology, the Lord just wouldn't allow. He stood in the way of that. And I said, thank you for standing in my way. And that's probably a prayer that most people, their mind might go tilt, but he really does because we can have the tendency that if we take things in our own hand, we will not see the benefit of what we went through and how it can make us better. And that's that's really what I feel this has done. It has, you know, made me better. It's made me stronger. Um, <laughs> what is it? Marvin Sapp never would have made it come to mind, you know, without him. That's my faith. My faith is in him. And I feel like, my two things in faith are o- obedience and trust. And what got me through was I trust God, regardless of what it looked like, regardless of what it felt like. I've gone through so much in my life. I've seen him move too many times that I don't have the ability to not trust him. I- I'm literally incapable of not trusting him. He's done too much and shown too much. So even in the midst of that, I knew I just needed to obey him. And obeying him was hearing his voice say in a moment when I said, gosh, I'm always smiling and people think I'm happy. And if they only knew what went on behind this smile, I heard him say, so tell them. And so my obedience was to follow that. Well, how do I tell them? And he gave me the platform with the podcast and he's opening up other doors. And so um, that doesn't mean that there aren't times where my faith wavers or I get angry or fearful or upset or I question him but I'm human and those are emotions that God gave me. But again, my trust is firmly rooted in him. And so that is my faith. My faith is anchored strongly in him. And I I thank him for getting me through that and bringing me and taking me to wherever he's going. Since we touched on the subject of suicide, those listening, if you know someone of yourself, uh, see yourself in a crisis, there is a, uh, resource you can call 988 or text 988 or you can go to the website 988lifeline.org uh, want to put that out there the, let's go back to the point of sometimes we just don't see God in our circle in our in our situation and for you when there was a time where you couldn't see your way out when you're in the middle in the thick of things what do you understand now after you have survived and got to the other side of safety and also a better mindset? The first thing that comes my, to mind, what I've learned is that it's it's double-sided. The first and foremost is that what I go through while it's me being used and I'm the one feeling the emotions and the capacity of that is really not for me. It's for someone else. Like I can benefit and I gain from it. And God is a God. He uses everything. He wastes nothing. But everything that I was able to endure was for someone else who possibly could not or would not. And so when others hear my voice and they hear my story and my testimony and they go, wow, she made it through this. And I see a lot of similarities and parallels, or that sounds just like me, then that gives them the strength and the courage and the fight, even if the fight is just one more day. And then they hear someone else's story. That's just one more day until they can get to that place. So for me, what I've taken away from it, as I always have, I'm reminded that what I go through is for the next person. And again, Um, That doesn't mean that God doesn't have something for me. I've come out stronger. Like I said, I've come out stronger. Um, There's so many blessings in this, but it is for someone else. When we seek God for strength, sometimes we just, we just don't know. (laughs) We don't know what we're doing. We're confused or we're just frustrated because things that we wanted to happen in our life, maybe goals or dreams, and just didn't take the route that we thought it would take. Right. How did you deal with that? Deal with disappointment of, man, this is what I kind of wanted, but I didn't get that. And how did you use that as motivation to still understand that God's still in control and he has your best interest in him? 
Yeah. Ooh. How did I handle that? Like every other woman, I screamed and threw a tantrum and cried. <laughs> um, no, but I mean, real seriously, um, I don't want to negate the humanity in us being believers and Christians. And I think that's where a lot of people miss it because they're trying to reach perfectionism and that's just not possible. I've had to learn that with being an entrepreneur and coming from a history that taught me perfectionism that you're as a leader or someone in charge or as a Christian even, Christians aren't supposed to be sad. Christians aren't supposed to be depressed. Christians aren't, Christians aren't, Christians aren't. Okay, well, God in his humanity, and if we look at Christ, you know, in the garden, it says that, you know, he went to God and asked him to remove the cup. Okay, I've had moments of saying, God, remove the cup. I don't want this. I don't like this. This doesn't feel good. This doesn't feel fair. This doesn't seem right. Um, I'm not going to do it, you know, screaming and kicking. But God's goodness and his grace and his mercy and allowing me to be human and allowing me a safe space in him to be vulnerable, to be myself. Because I mean, really, if I can't be myself with God, then who can I? You know, he knows everything about me. And so what's helped me is just evolving into really finding Takiya and learning to be Takiya and leaning into that with my faith and my relationship, my relationship. I'm huge on relationship versus religion. That's what religion tells us is Christians aren't supposed to do this and Christians should have, but relationship allows you to be who you are. And God has really helped me in that. And that's what's helped walk me through that. And it's also helped me to become very outspoken and verbal and loud about being comfortable and confident in who I am and stepping away from, yes, I associate as a Christian, which means to become Christ-like, to strive for perfection, but I am still created fearfully and wonderfully in his image and I get to be me. And that's helped me all the more. Just, it's so liberating and it's so freeing. And uh, I don't have any stones that people are going to turn over and go, look, see, we knew this about, no, I get to be exactly who I am. Who I am privately is who I am publicly. And that's so freeing. In the Bible, not to get too uh, spiritual, but uh, Second Corinthians talks about uh, guys, guys, uh, grace for us because his grace is sufficient and his power is made perfect in our weakness. Yes. People, we have so many things we can worry about in this world. And if there's one thing we should worry about is our personal relationship. And sometimes I think when conflict happens, when things happen, sometimes it's like a sign for him trying to get our attention, like warning signs. And it's like those warning signs get stronger and louder the further we go away. With your personal relationship, what's some of the things that you are starting to understand more about what God's plan is for your own life? I am learning to understand with his plan for my life that when he says no to a person or people that I do not second guess that because when I look back over the things that I've gone through, there were instances where God said yes. So like for instance, we'll even say my marriage. I heard God give me a yes. Now I am married in my 40s. I'm 47. So I sought God and I waited on God. I wanted that godly marriage. And I heard a yes. But then you go, well, why did it turn out this way? Well, it takes two people to obey God, bottom line. And God had to really deal with and heal my heart because I was so angry and frustrated at the things that went on. But also what I had to recognize that when God was giving me the release to leave that marriage, I stayed a little bit longer than I should have. And what I mean by that is when God says it's time for you to let go of this person or it's time to you for you to discern that I don't want these people in your life, I'm leaning into that and I'm obeying that much more quickly. The last two years, God has done a really, what I call a major sweep in my life with even some long-term 
friendships and people that I thought would be there forever. They didn't end in a horrible or nasty way, but I'm learning to lean in. Okay. That season is over and don't try to reconnect that because if we stay in a certain atmosphere, a certain place, and he can't move us to the next atmosphere to change that atmosphere, which also changes our own atmosphere. And so that's what I've taken away from this in this season is that because I'm, I'm such a lover of God's people. I am, I call myself, I'm like, I tell people I'm the best friend you never knew you had. I don't need you to be my best friend, but I'll be a best friend to you because I just love people. And, and God gives me a spirit of discernment, what we call empathy, but a spirit of discernment with people. And I just love people and I have a heart for people. But I'm, I've also learned that no more trauma bonding, no more hanging on and holding on to people for longer than I should because I can understand and I can see their issues, God. Yeah, they have to walk through that themselves. They have to walk through those things unless God tells me to. And so what I've taken away from that is um, just moving through life that liberation again, free to be me and not second guessing that I do something wrong when something ends or second guessing, well, I have to turn the other cheek and love them like the Lord loves them. I love them, but I can move on. And so I've learned that in this season. We've been talking to, to Kia LaShawn and you go to her website, to KiaLaShawnMinistries.com. She also has a podcast herself that you can check out behind this smile. Last thing I want to touch on is I know we've been talking about the topic seeking God for strength in tough times, but let's talk about the whole human part because I think that's a great part to wrap this up in. The human side of us, we're going to be real. We're going to seek other things. How did you, at what point did you realize that seeking other things, keeping your focus on other things, because it's easier. Because, you know, it's, you can see it's there, right? It's hard to see God sometimes. At what point did you realize, man, I got to shift my focus? Mm-hmm. That's a, if I'm being honest, that's a constant. It's, it's a daily, I won't say struggle, but it's a daily obstacle. Um, what's the scripture that comes to, to mind where I believe it was Paul, Paul or Peter, and he talks about crucifying the flesh daily. Um, because like you said, we are human. And so we're going to have our own wants and our own desires. But another scripture that comes to mind is Psalm 37 and four. If we delight ourselves in the Lord, he'll give us the desires of our heart. And a lot of times people read that and they go, Ooh, I'm going to tell God that I want this and I want that. No, what God has shown me that means is if you get in my face and you seek my face and you spend time and you have a relationship with me, I'm going to start downloading passions and desires in your heart the things that I want for you. And it's going to get in your heart so that you want those things for yourself and you'll gravitate towards those things. And what happens is our flesh and our spirit battles and we start to want what we want when we want it. And some of those things may not be of God. And so for me, it's just daily. I got to have that relationship with God. I got to talk to him. I need to read my Bible. I need to pray. I need to align myself with other believers that are going to encourage or that, you know, are not going to be yes people, but they're going to say, you know, girl, no, that don't make any sense. And did you seek God and what is God saying? So I think it's just a daily um, routine and regimen that we all should and that I definitely try to do. And I say try because some days I miss it. I'm human. You know, but for the most part, my relationship reels me back in and I sit with that. At any point prior to to today, uh, where you are in your space now, did you ever feel that you were disconnected from God? Yes. And I will say, yes, I felt disconnected from God, but I've never felt God disconnected from me, if that makes sense. And I'll give a quick example. Uh, several years ago, I was in the space. My daughter had gone through some things and I felt I was really angry with God because my daughter was suffering. She had been, she had not yet gotten the diagnosis for um, a mental illness that we learned about and are walking through, but I couldn't understand the rebel, what I thought was rebellion. And I was just so heartbroken for my daughter in the place that I found myself in. And I remember being angry with God for a whole year. And because I'm like, I have given my life to you. I serve you. I love you. I feel like I'm doing the right thing. Why is this happening? Now, it did not occur to me that I was angry with God 
for that whole year. And what I mean by that is it took God a year later, one day whispering to me while I'm folding clothes to just say, why don't you say it? And when he said that, I yelled out, I'm angry with you. And that was the first time I'd vocalized it. My actions felt disconnected from him. And what I mean by that is I still went to church. I still prayed, but it was kind of like I was throwing God a bone, like I was doing him a favor. Well, I'm going to go to church because that's what you want. I'm going to pray because that's what you want. I'm going to read my Bible because that's what you want. I wasn't doing him any favors, but thank God he, like you said, gives us grace. His grace is sufficient. And my weakness He was right there with me in it. So though I felt like I was disconnecting from him, he never disconnected from me. And he let me go a whole year of walking that out. And when he whispered to me, why don't you just say it? I knew exactly what he was asking of me. And I screamed and yelled about it. And then like any loving father, it was like, okay, come here, daughter. Now let's fix this. And let me let you know, I still love you. And I never left you in these moments. That's good. There's someone listening to us right now and they want to, connect with you and your ministry and learn more about what it is that you're trying to do in the future? How can they do so? So I have made it super easy. Everything, my website, the social media handles, the podcast, your smile is your weapon. That's it. You can find me across all platforms, Instagram, Facebook, TikTok, the website, your smile is your weapon. Last thing is if someone right now is listening and they feel like, man, I'm not in great space. Disclaimer, we want everybody to see professional help if you need that. But just generally speaking, what would you say to encourage somebody out there who just needs that extra push? I've been there. I've been there. And regardless of the differences, the comparisons, or the similarities of our situations. I have been there. I have been at the lowest of lows and wanting to not only end my life, take my own life, but also once getting over that, finding out that I was dying at one point and the Lord healed me and brought me through that, but I've been there and I understand the emotions and the feelings. I understand the isolation. I understand the self-doubt and maybe even the lack of self, self-worth self and self-value. But like I say to everyone, keep going. The analogy that I give is a lot of times we say we're going through something. I'm going through this. I'm going through that. I'm dealing with this. I'm going through. I'm going through. I want you to visualize a tunnel. You can drive through that tunnel and it's sunlight. But when you get to the tunnel, it goes dark other than the lighting that they put in that tunnel. If you stop in the middle of that tunnel, you'll never get out to the sunshine again. You have to keep driving. You have to keep going through to get to the other side. I want you to keep going. I don't want you to sit still in that tunnel, even if it's just putting one foot in front of the other. If today it's just, I got up, I didn't shower, but I at least brushed my teeth or I didn't do any of that. That's fine. You got to keep going because the thing is, is if you keep going through, you're going to come out on the other side. Once again, been talking to Takia LaShawn. Go to her website, TakiyaLaShawnMinistries.com. Also check out her podcast that she has behind this smile. Like always, I want to say thank you for your time. Thank you.